And we are live. Outstanding. Hi, everybody. No, we're in sitting. Okay. We're not outstanding. Sorry. Bad puns. It's apparently bad pun night. <laughs> we don't have a theme tonight. Um, everybody's just trying to catch up. Yeah. Everybody's just trying to catch up. Which is why we're doing evening prayer a little bit differently. So the, um, the service that we used on Tuesday evening, hi everybody, welcome, good evening. <laughs> and the service that we used, the order of service that we used on Tuesday is from this book, Daily Prayer for All Seasons, from Church Publishing, um, which I like very much. And I will confess that I brought this out even though I've been using it for our noonday prayers before everything blew up, um, I had sort of let it slip my mind how much I like this resource. And I saw a priest who is very much beloved by many of you, Adrian Dawson, using it for noonday prayers the other day. Um, uh, it, well, it, we don't have a theme in mind. Nobody gave us a suggestion, and honestly, we're a little burned out. Um, and um, although uh, Mary just made an outstanding pun, and so puns are encouraged. Everybody can participate in theme night um, if it's going to be pun night. Um, be a little more subdued. So in any event, um, so, I, so I confess that it was Adrian Dawson who reminded me um, of how great this resource is. And on Tuesday, we used the Vespers service from the uh, first chapter in this book um, that is uh, prayers for ordinary time but there are two sections because ordinary time goes on for a long time um, ordinary time goes on until advent and so the the uh, order of service that we used on tuesday and last night for zoom evening prayer was from the section on creation and tonight we are going to use the order of service from the section, um, Joel, that's so punny. What did he say? Yeah, it's so punny. He's great. Uh, we're using from the section that is on rest, but before we begin, I want to make clear, and it'll be clear within the service of prayer itself, that um, it's not about rest in the sense of in action. Um, it's about rest in preparation for action. It is the rest that is necessary to be effective in action. Um, and I'll be honest that I'm being a little selfish in using this in that um, there hasn't been a whole lot of rest recently. Um, and I think that's true for most people. And so, um, even in this time when we're being called to action, and we should heed that call, uh, we need to remember that we also have to rest, and that the surest rest is in our God, who will um, hold us tenderly like the good mother who tenderly and compassionately holds the child whom she loves more than life itself. So let's see who all is here. Rich is here, Anne is here, Nancy is here, Joel is here, Christopher is here, Ton Tony and Jed, sorry, Joni and Ted <laughs> are here. Um, and I'm so grateful that you're all here. So I hope you can see, um, I hope you can, I hope it's big enough for you to see the, um, here it is, that's big enough for you to see the service here on the, it's on the left side of my screen. I don't know what side of your screen it's on, but it's obviously, you know, a piece of paper. All right. So I hope that works out. All right, then. So as we turn on lamps at dusk, we greet the evening by welcoming God to abide with us anew. I encourage you to say aloud 
the lines that are bolded and I may also invite you to um, also say aloud the, for example, the song of our true nature when it comes. Holy One, lift our burdens. For your yoke is easy. O God, as the showers renew the earth, bathe us in your healing power. Stretch out your hand that we may live and know that you alone are God in whose faithfulness we have life all our days. Amen. Amen. And let's um, offer together the song of our true nature from the revelations of divine love by uh, the revelations of divine love to Julian of Norwich. Christ, Christ revealed our frailty and our falling, our trespasses and our humiliations. Christ also revealed his blessed power, his blessed wisdom and love. He protects us as tenderly and as sweetly when we are in greatest need. He raises us in spirit and turns everything to glory and joy without ending. God is the ground and the substance the very, the very essence of nature. God is the true father and mother of natures. We are all bound to God by nature, and we are all bound to God by grace. And this grace is for all the world, because it is our precious mother, Christ. For this fair nature was prepared by Christ for the honor and nobility of all, and for the joy and bliss of salvation. Our scripture for tonight is from the first letter of John. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. By this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. The meditation on this scripture comes to us from St. John of the Cross where there is no love, put love, and you will draw love out. Where have we neglected to put love? Where do we ask that love be drawn from us? Let's take half a minute of silence, and I'll say a few words. So I've been um, thinking about this passage and this both from the first letter of John and from St. John of the Cross um, all afternoon as I've been considering um, how to conduct our evening prayer this evening. And I feel like it's really important um, even at evening prayer when we are asked to examine ourselves um, 
honestly, um, which can sometimes be painfully. But I feel like it's um, Im important that while naming truth, it be done in love and in compassion. And so how do I, how do, I do that? Uh, because uh, people have been in tremendous love and trust, um, been asking me to question myself. And, uh, and that is painful, but I recognize um, the loving uh, and the, the love and the trust that lies behind that, um, particularly in this time. So what am I talking about? Um, I am talking about um, a couple of different things. So the questions that have come up for me have been um, to ask me to examine myself and um, to, to examine the nature of my love for people who are different from myself. I love a lot of people who are different from me. I am very blessed to have many friends. Very blessed to have many friends. And many of them are a lot like me and many of them are not. And, um, and in my family, there are people, mostly people who are like me. Not that there are a whole lot of them left, but there are a lot of, there are enough of them left. Most of them are like me, and um, there are ways that they are not like me. Oh, Retta, get to the point. The point is that um, although I believe that I am a loving person, there are ways that I fail to love. And some of those ways actually have to do with where I identify essential, um, um, absolutely essential principles of justice. And it has been called to my attention that my rage about some of the events of this past Monday night were significantly more poignant than my sense of despair about the murders of Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Aubrey and George Floyd and um, all of the people that I am aware of uh, who have been murdered by the police over the years. And how my response to those murders has been despair Whereas my response to what struck me as a very personal violation on Monday night by our president um, uh, really set me on fire, really set me on fire in a rage, in a rage. And um, to ask why one lit a fire in me and one... Uh, put me in a place of feeling um, unable to do anything, right? It put me not in an active state, but in a passive state. And so I am listening. I'm listening to that and I'm sitting with that. And I feel like love is being drawn from me by um, people taking a great risk and telling me where I need to examine myself. Where am I moved to action? And uh, where am I moved to throw my hands up? Hmm. That is something for me to think about. Maybe it's something for you to think about. I noticed someone um, talking about a perfectly terrible thing that happened over the past two th days where a, a dog was mistreated 
on camera. And the rage that people had about that, like the rage that people have about the damage that's being done for property, is um, significantly hotter and drawing white people to, um, to speak out or to take action far more than uh, years, generations um, of systematic oppression, suffering, murder. So here's what I want to ask of all of us. Um, it, it is a great courage. I'm asking us all to um, take our deep breaths and to summon great courage and to speak honestly and truthfully about where we are hurting and how people hurt us. And then I want us all to summon our courage and deep trust and listen to one another. When someone speaks to you in love and trust to tell you where they are hurting, the only Christian response is to courageously listen. I hear many people saying, I don't understand the violence. I don't understand the need to um, act out. Okay. That's a, that's a reasonable question to have. It's a reasonable question to say, why are people who are already living without so much um, expressing their rage in destructive ways that deprive them of additional resources? It's a fair question. But then you need to listen to the answer. The question needs to not then be, since I don't understand it, therefore there must be no reason for it. The only Christian response is to say, I'm going to listen to where this is coming from. And I'm going to believe you when you tell me about your pain. And I want to tell you, those of you out there who are white um, are going to find this process to be excruciatingly painful. Um, I am only a little ways on this journey, and I find it excruciatingly painful. But the truth is, I just need to take my pain to God and confess it and lay it at God's feet and trust that there is love in it and trust that there is healing in it that God's heart is greater than mine and God is able to encompass my pain and the pain of someone who is lovingly telling me about theirs. And that only then can there be healing and true reconciliation. And then work together beyond simply reconciliation, but restoration, restorative justice, a true healing of hearts, of relationships, and the world. And so rest is necessary for that, but not for its own sake, but for us to gather our courage and endure the painful process of truth, of listening, of sitting with truths that hurt, knowing that on the other side and throughout the whole process, there is the love of God. Let us participate in that together. Amen. All right. 
let us um, continue. Oh, hi, Andrew. Welcome from Uganda. Isn't that lovely? Um, Andrew, by all means, uh, make yourself known. Let us, let us see your face, if that's possible. Acting out comes from trauma, says Nancy. That is absolutely. And um, Christopher, you're 100% right. Uh, sorry, 100% right. Freudian slip is showing. There's your pun. Um, a lot of the violence came from white supremacists infiltrating the protests. That is absolutely true. That is 100% true. But it is also true that um, that the frustration and the anger of many people is such that it feels like there is no other way to express it that people will listen to than to um, uh, th than to uh, than to create a fracar, right? Um, that that there that the only way to get people to participate is to attack property um, and. Um, of course, of course, I don't endorse violence, but um, I have to listen when people tell me that they feel so unheard, that they feel like there is no other way to express their pain, that people will listen. So, um, yes, most of the violence is coming from outside um, um, agent provocateur, but um, it's but I'm not going. I'm not going to condemn outright the people whose desperation and despair um, has led them to act out. As Nancy says, acting out comes from trauma. Let's continue with the confession, please, all together, if you may, if we can. Most, Most loving, loving God, God we, we confess, confess that, that we, we have, have not loved in thought, word, word or, or deed. deed. We, we have, have not, not loved, loved you or our, or our neighbors, neighbors or, or ourselves. We are we sorry. Are sorry. Remind, Remind us that you love us unconditionally and help us to rest in your love. Loving God, have mercy on us. Forgive us for forgetting to love and renew our ability to give and receive love in all that we do. Amen. Gracious God, whenever we err, fill our hearts with your love. Oh, sorry, that was fill our line. Fill our hearts with your love. When we wound or are wounded, fill our hearts with your love. When tempted to judge, fill our hearts with your love. Whenever there is hurt, loss, or despair, fill our world with your love. Please offer up your own prayers at this time. As you are composing them, because there's a bit of a lag, I'll go ahead and offer up prayers for those who are in the streets tonight and those who are confined in their homes, those who are compelled to work, and those who can find no work. We pray for those who are imprisoned in any way we pray for those who hold others prisoner we pray for the sick and we pray for those who tend them we pray for the hungry and the homeless and the destitute and we pray for those who reach out to meet their need We pray for the repose of the soul of Sally Jane Boone, one-time member of Trinity Episcopal Church in Towson, more recently of Emmanuel Glencoe. May she rest in peace and may light perpetual shine upon her. We pray for all of those who are engaged in the work of recovery and, and maintaining or achieving their sobriety. We pray for all those who struggle with mental health. 
or illness that is under control, but always something they must be mindful of. I pray especially for those in dysfunctional and abusive households. May God hold them in her special care and protect them from the emotional as well as the physical blows that can come from that situation. I pray for this country. I pray for the whole world consumed with the pandemic of the coronavirus, but especially for this country plunged into the chaos of both physical sickness, political sickness, and spiritual sickness, that the healing power of the Holy Spirit will come upon us, as I believe it already has, and do the work and move us to do the work that needs to be done to bring healing to the world. Make us faithful instruments of your peace. May we fill our world with your love. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's say the prayer attributed to St. Francis together. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine, divine Master, grant, grant that I may not, not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Holy One, lift our burdens. For your yoke is easy. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, my friends. Kathleen will see you tomorrow evening at six o'clock for evening prayer. I hope to see you all on Sunday morning for our celebration of our seniors and to receive your donations of food to ACTC and of good used clothing to our surprise shop. And then in the evening at five o'clock for evening prayer. I also hope to see you for coffee hour at 12 at noon after the uh, Cathedral of the Incarnation service. Have a good night. Bye-bye.